Um, so embrace the new. So it's a new year. You know, I was debating whether I should call this just embrace the new or embrace the new with the cost. But I do think that a lot of times we do not embrace the new because we don't want to pay the cost. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the patch pulls away from it, the new from the old, and a worse pair results. So uh, embracing change sometimes can be very difficult. And let's face it, we don't like change, right? As human beings, we do not like change. Think about it. Ch I, I like church seat. Uh, seating arrangements because people generally sit at the same spot and we just we just don't have it. It's just the truth, right? And I'm not gonna say who, but there was a lady here previously in this church, but before we were the pastors, that I heard that her seat was like right behind Crystal. And I heard that even if it was a visitor that sat in her chair, she would kick them out. <laughs> So, yeah, you know, we, we're just creatures of habit. We are. And so a lot of times when something new comes up, we freak out. And I think that we like to think of ourselves as people that, oh, you know, I, I, we like new things. But really, new things, a lot of times it's change. And we, our human nature, nature is to resi resist change. So we're going to be reading uh, Mark right after the call of Matthew. And as you guys know, I love the chosen. Any excuse to play any clips, I will do that. Uh, we already have seen this clip. Uh, it is the call of Matthew. We're not, the, the thing is that we're going to be reading that and then what follows. And uh, so I thought, you know what, let's just start with the video clip. I figure probably half of you haven't seen it because when I played it, you weren't here anyway. So let's just go ahead and play it again. Are we ready to do that? We're not. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Did you put it in here? Okay. Thank you. That that it's replaying. Just gonna stop it. All right. So, huh? Yeah. Well, no. That, that that's what we needed to do. That's what we needed to show. Um, so, let's read. Uh, this is from uh, the Gospel of Mark, chapter two, verse fourteen. We're gonna start there. As he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting in the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. I love how, you notice the call of Matthew, I mean, think about all that happened and what Matthew gave up, and it's summed up in just one verse. He got up and, and, and followed him. It's all the Bible says. And I just love that. It's, it's, you know, church, that, that should be our response to God when he asks us to do something. Amen. It should be, let's do it. Um, and, and here's the thing. I, did he have time to think about the cost? <laughs> you know, because for 
what we read here, he said, follow me. And he says, he got up and followed him. So uh, it's just incredible. And you know, you know one thing that I love that here? Do you realize Jesus did what I'm telling you to do, which is you disrupt people in their jobs? Because where was Matthew sitting at? What does it say? Where was he sit- sitting in this passage, verse 14? In a tax booth. He was a tax collector. So he was doing his job. And Jesus came and interrupted him. You see that church? You want to be like Jesus? Well, guess what? You need to start interrupting people on their jobs, right? Because when I talked to Carlos, he was at his job. And I interrupted him. So I love that. And, and uh, when we go out and talk to people and disrupt their lives, we're being Jesus too. Amen? Just keep that in mind. By the way, somebody told me that, somebody said, you need to be careful because, again, I, this goes against our culture, and it is sad because uh, so many more people sh- could be saved if, if, if we just had that culture where we can just talk to people. Um, but, uh, but it doesn't matter. We can go against culture. Amen? Is that okay? Can we? No? Anybody? Can we go against culture? Yes. Come on, let's everybody say yes. yes. We better. I mean, if we are going to do what Jesus says, I hope we're willing to do that. Uh, PA, your phone. Or, excuse me. It's the same password, right? Okay. We do know our passwords, so it's okay. All right. And it happened that he was reclining at the table in his house. Now, I love the clip. This one didn't play, but remember the previous clip. Um, G- Jesus, this in the, in the movie, right? The guy playing Jesus said to Matthew, uh, something like, "You're gonna be, uh, you know, you're gonna be, you're gonna go to a party this evening." He goes, "Well, Matthew goes, well, I don't do very well at parties because remember he was hated." And then Jesus says, "Well, no, you're gonna be throwing the party, right?" Well, and then here it is. It's because this is actually in his house. They're in Matthew's house. All right. So when it happened that he was reclining at the table in his house, in Matthew's house, and many tax collectors and sinners were dining with Jesus and his disciples, for they were many of them. And they were following him. When the scribes of the, of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, why is he eating and drinking with tax collectors and sinners? And hearing this, Jesus said to them, it's not, it is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Um, you need to know that in those days, if you were a strict Jew, Jew an Orthodox Jew, you didn't hang out with people that really didn't follow the law like you did. Amen. So Jesus was supposed to be a teacher and hanging out with these people, the sinners, he was like, dude, what are you doing? Um, so it was a double whammy, not only because they were sinners, but then they were not strictly following the law. So then that was an icky thing, at least at the time. And um, I, I love to see that Jesus, of course, is always hanging around sinners. Amen? Church, guess what? We need to hang around sinners some more. Amen? And that's why I love that, you know what, if you talk to the person in front of you, the lady in the gas station, you know, the, 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 how about, you know what, try this, next time something's delivered to your house, talk to the person that delivers it, ask them, hey, where do you go to church, I'm telling you, you don't know who's in front of you, and it's probably a sinner, amen, <laughs> well, we're all sinners, but I'm using it in the sense that here, they're being called sinners, okay, um, so I, I, I love that then Jesus, of course, was always hanging around sinners. And uh, I got to tell you something. Um, how many of you guys were here? Who remembers there was a sign out there? Uh, it was out there for six months. And it said, some of you weren't here when that sign was out there. It said, when I play in a worship band, contact us. Who saw that sign? A few of you. <laughs> when I play in a worship band, contact us. And uh, anyway, uh, 
when we first took over the church here, there were some youth, um, and some of them were probably not saved. And there was a lady, uh, she was an older lady, and she was really mad. And she said, "Why?" basically she was saying, why do you have sinners in the worship? <laughs> and church, I've talked to people, uh, and uh, one, of them, one of my relatives that think that, no, you should not do that, and that is wrong. But I'm not going to argue, really, but here's what i got to tell you. I just have a sneak suspicion that Jesus would allow a sinner to be in the worship. I just do. I'm sorry. And you might disagree with me, and I, and, I, and I can understand why you would. But I think that Jesus would allow a sinner, someone that is not saved, in the worship. Um, and here's what you got to think. Remember, Jesus allowed a thief to be not only one of the 12, but he was in charge of the money. Now let that sink in. Not only did he let a, a, a sinner, a thief, stay the whole time with him and treat him the same as far as we know because the Bible doesn't say otherwise. Treat him the same as everyone else. Not only did he allow a thief to be one of the twelve, but he put him in charge of the money. And furthermore, he knew that he was stealing the money. And he didn't kick him out. And you're going to tell me that I can't put a sinner in the worship team? I disagree with you. And that's okay. I'm not going to fight. Okay. But I'm just telling you. Just think. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Let's go out to the highways and byways. Just go out today. To me, this excites me. And, and every time I, I read about Jesus and the sinners, I just want to go and invite sinners, you know. <laughs> and when I use the word sinners, I'm using it in the sense that there's people that, you know, that people don't want to talk to. You, you know what I'm talking about. There's people that even we don't want to talk to. We're, we don't want to hang out with them. We, we're afraid. And, and we got to use wisdom out of that. So I'm not talking about being unwise. But uh, this should just, I don't know, put fire in our feet. And you know what? We should go out today and take those cars that are out there on, on your way out and just start talking to people. Amen? All right. Um, let's continue. John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and they came and said to him, why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast? But your disciples do not fast. And Jesus said to them, While the bridegroom is with them, the attendants of the bridegroom cannot fast. Can they? So long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them. And then they will fast in that day. Um, here, just also so you know, if you were a strict Jew, an Orthodox Jew, and you really kept the law, you fasted on Mondays and Thursdays, I believe is what it was, in those days, okay? And so here's Jesus purposely eating on the days we're supposed to be fasting. And here's what you got to understand. Jesus knew that he was going against culture, amen? You think Jesus went against culture of the day? Yeah, he did. Of course he did. That's why we should not be afraid to go against culture, all right? So I don't know why you think if it's cult against culture or not to go and talk to someone, the person standing in front of you, and hand them a church card and invite them. But guess what? If, if it is, then we're in good company. Amen? Amen? Jesus always went against culture. Uh, but so in those days, then the strict Jews who fast on Mondays and Thursdays, it was obviously would have been maybe a day that, that, that they should have been fasting. But what Jesus is doing here is he's teaching them, you know what, I'm doing something new because now we're going to be under grace and not under the law. Amen? Can you say amen to that? Aren't you glad that you don't have to worry about whether your, the garment that you're wearing has the same kind of strings or whatever that law is? I can't even remember it now, but. Aren't you glad that you don't have to go and slaughter animals? Crystal, cut the throat of a lamb. <laughs> yeah. Crystal and I have talked about this. She knows what I'm referring to that. But church, no, I mean, seriously. Seriously, aren't you glad that if you don't keep the fat Sabbath, you're not going to be stoned? Amen? Hey, we're under grace, church. Amen? And this is what Jesus is teaching the disciples right here and, and the people. All right. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the patch pulls away from it, 
the new from the old, and a worse tear results. No one puts new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost, and the skins as well. But one puts new wine into fresh wineskins. Here, basically, all, all it is saying is, are you ready for the new? Because you, if you're not ready, then it's not going to work, and it may go against you. I don't know a lot about wineskins in those days. Does anybody use wineskins anymore? Probably another country. All right. But from what I understand, of course, wine ferments and all that, and gases get put out that causes the skin to stretch, and the new skin can handle it, but the old cannot. And so, therefore, it would tear it. If you do that, it would tear it, and the whole thing would be destroyed. Um, but the point in here is, you know what? Are you ready to accept change? Are you ready to accept the new? And I think that a lot of times we may think, oh, you know, it's a new year, and yes, I will do it. But I don't know. Sometimes I don't think that we're as ready as we think we are. I, I love this. You may have seen this before. But they have done studies as far as change. And how do people react to change? So let's read this. All right. So to the left, what they've done is they say, you know what? Anytime change is introduced, what happens to the people? They say that 2.5% of the people, they call them the innovators. They're the ones that say, let's do it. Yes, let's do it. Now, I'm going. I don't need to think about it. Kind of like Matthew. Follow me. Okay, I'm here. And he went. Those are the innovators. By the way, as we read this, think about where do you fall? That's an interesting question. All right? So again, so the innovators, so 2.5% of you, when I said, hey, let's go and pass out cars and talk to people, people are going, yeah, let's do it. And there are some of you that are here today because some of those innovators were not invited you. They, you know what? They cut on and they did it. All right? Okay. So that's 2.5%. How sad. Only 2.5% of them go, yeah, let's do it. Let's go. All right? Now, there's 13.5%. They are the early adopters. They don't go immediately, let's do it. But they're like, Okay, they, they, they take maybe a day or two, but then, all right, let's do it. I, 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 I think I'm going to pass out cards. All right, I'm going. But they do it after the innovators, okay? Then 34% is the early majority. They're the ones that are like, hmm, well, let's see how it works, all right? And uh, let me see. Okay, so the Ponce family is here because a car was passed out to them. Wow, well, that's interesting. All right. And, and Josue is here because somebody talked to him at a grocery store. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. And Bobby's here because somebody talked to her. Okay, you know what? I, I, I think I'm, yeah, I, I'm going to do it. So, you see what I'm saying? They, they take a little bit. They got to think about it. Okay? They got to consider and ponder, right? And get on their thinking spot. And then they jump in. All right, so that's 34%. The other 34% is saying, you know what, now I got to see this. Okay, there's Ponce, there's Josue, there's Bobby, that's not enough. I got to see more people. I got to see this working more, and then I'm going to jump in. All right, so they, they, they do join, but they, they're kind of late to the game. All right, they're late to the party. And then there's 16%, actually, I... I've seen another graph where the, the laggards are like 13.5%, and there's 2.5% that will never join. They will never pass out a card. No, I'm not doing it. So let me ask you. You don't have to say this out loud, but <laughs> where do you fall? <laughs> Amen? And like I said, we all, I think, like to think of ourselves as people that, yeah, you know, we embrace change and all that, but uh, where do you fall? And as usual, uh, when I say that Luke 16.8 is my favorite verse in the entire Bible, church, I mean it. I, I think about that almost daily. I'm always running into things like this. The question isn't who's going to let me, it's who's going to stop me. I always find this, and, you know, just any, any side, they're not Christian. But as usual, the world is always going for it. I mean, look about that. Let me read that again. The question isn't. Who's going to let me? It's who's going to stop me. Church, may we have that attitude in the things of God. Amen? 
Let's not be the laggards or the ones that are late to the game. Here's one that I had Ethan Photoshop for me. The only thing standing between you and your goal is the blank story that you're telling yourself as to why you can't achieve it. Let that sink in. I believe there's all of us here have things that God has asked us to do, that he wants us to do, and we know that he wants us to do it. But we are afraid, okay? And we tell us stories as to why we can't do it, and we have excuses. Church, it's time to move on past that, amen? Embrace the need. Embrace change. And one thing that I want to show here is this verse. I think that a lot of us are not willing to pay the cost. It says, but the king said to Arauna, no, but I will buy it from you for a price. I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God. So it cost me nothing. That's a long story, but basically King David had to do a, a burnt offering. And somebody said, here, I'll give all this to you basically for free. Just go do your burnt offering. And King David says, you know what? No, I, I will pay you the money. I'm not going to offer God anything that does not cost me something. All right? And um, church, I think that's what we need to do. We need to count the cost and then not be afraid and just pay it. Because it's all in us back. I believe that all of us here have things that we know God is speaking to us and we're just holding back. And the problem is that when, when we hold back, you know what we're doing? You know the, the Israelites, how they went 40 years around the desert? You know what? That, that's where we end up. We end up wasting time and never getting to, what, to, to the place where God wants us, the, where God wants us the, the mountain high that he has for us because we don't want to pay the price. Um, in the call of Matthew, he, uh, when Jesus said, follow me, Right, verse 14, as he, as he passed by Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting in the tax booth, uh, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting in the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me, and he got up and followed him. I was reading that they say, you know, of all the disciples, Matthew paid the highest price, <laughs> price, they say, because they said the fishermen, there was always boats, and they could, they could have returned to that, but what was uh, Matthew going to do? I mean, think about it. He left the Romans, he left the post. Right? And, and now he would have been a different man. He would have made a lot of friends. And, and now what's he going to go back and go steal from them? It, 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 first of all, the Romans may not take him back. I mean, I don't know. So, I mean, his wealth, he left it all behind. So, uh, church, I think that, you know, so many times we're afraid to pay the cost. But I think what we don't realize is that what we gain does not compare to whatever we pay. Amen? Amen? Uh, I can tell you that there is, you know, plenty of times that P and I can be doing business or whatever, and, and we're not making money because we are in the business of God's kingdom. And I'm not saying that for any reason I don't want pity or compassion or accolades. I don't. I'm just telling you the truth. But you know what? We gain back from God. I don't know that we can, can, can we even, I think, what, what I'm trying to say is that whatever we pay, God really gives us way more than whatever it is that we gave. Amen? Amen? Um, I'm just thinking of how I married uh, Pastor Alexandra. I knew that she, she knew that she was called, and I knew that she was not going to marry anyone that, did, that was not in ministry. And remember, at the time, I did not care for ministry. <laughs> <laughs> and no, I did not go into ministry just to <laughs> marry Pete, just so you know. Okay, no, I did. Uh, now, I would not be here 30 years later. But the point being, I think of, you know what, I left my, remember I was a, a software engineer and all that, but you know what, then, I mean, I get my lovely, beautiful wife, and we'll be married for 30 years. I wouldn't, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, but that's way better than sitting in a cubicle writing code. Amen? And so, church, let's, let's count the cost, and I think, I think it is sad because I see so many Christians miss out on so much because they don't want to pay the cost. They don't want to make the change. They're afraid. What happens is this. What happens is that. And I pray that this year we'll be like Matthew. 
who was sitting in his job, collecting money, stealing from people, as he always did, and made himself rich. And then Jesus comes by one day and says, follow me. And he got up and followed. May we have that kind of heart. Amen? Okay, let's stand and let's pray, please. Lord, what a privilege. What a privilege to leave everything behind and follow. And Holy Spirit, I know that you're speaking to us right now. I know that all of us have things in our minds that you've already brought to mind that, 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 that we know that you want us to do and, and, and we're afraid to do it for whatever reason. Lord, I pray that today would be the day that we, like Matthew, get up and say, you know what? I'm going to follow. I'm going to do this. And Lord, I pray that we will not be people that are afraid to count and pay the cost. Because really what you give us in return, like Jay said, just, just cannot be canceled. There's so much more, so much better than whatever we're holding on to. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Amen. Church, great, great to see you in the new year. It's going to be a great year. Uh, let's be like Matthew and get up and follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. As usual, uh, we'll stay here in fellowship, and then those that can will go to lunch. Our first lunch of the year. Amen. All right.